We're talking about building hot rods here. We're not talking about sugar coating. We're talking about everything. Knuckle busting. The rust in your fucking eyes. We're talking about building fucking hot rods. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of It's All About the Build podcast. As always, you have me, Elliot Slack, and to the right of me is my wife, Melanie. Hey, yo. And as always... I'm Randy. Hey, what's up, guys? He's Randy. Now, we have a pretty damn good show today. We are on location in... Watsika? Is it Watsika? Watsika, yep. Watsika. Watsika. Yeah, Watsika. Watsika, Illinois. And um, we're gonna. I'm going to read off some credentials here where we're at and see if you guys can guess who it is first. But um, his his credentials are pretty pretty amazing, and his story is even, even better, and... His old lady story coming about is pretty damn impressive as well. So that's why we're here. And luckily, we have friends in from out of town that are going to be joining us. But a little bit on just some awards that this company has won in the past and this builder has done. Um, it's a long list. So here we go. Fine Nine Award at Daryl Starbird National Rod and Custom Show. Roadster First in Class and the Sweepstakes Rod and the Blackie Gagine Award at the 2023 Grand National Roadster Show in Pomona, California. Best Engineering in the World's Most Beautiful Truck at the 2023 Grand National Truck Show. Showcased in magazines and graced the covers of magazines with the likes of Classic Truck, Street Rodder, Raw Bike, Built Not Bought, Hot Rod, Bagger, and American Bagger. And if that wasn't enough for you guys, ladies and gentlemen, we have TV appearances where he featured twice on Power Nation, three-time builder on Spike TV, Search and Destroy. And if that wasn't enough, this son of a bitch had his very own show. Uh, if you guys are living under a rock, I'm sure you uh, haven't heard of it. But if you're like everybody else, Wrenched is the name of this show. And I am proud to introduce Justin and Megan from Nichols Paint and Fab. And their buddy, Mitch, from Michigan. Big Deborah. Big Deborah <laughs> in the house. So um, before uh, before we start, I want a couple of questions answered um, about the shop here, Justin, and um, just to give them a feel for what we're dealing with whenever they come to you. What what do you feel sets you apart from every other shop here at Nichols? Uh, I mean, everybody's got their own style and the way they do things. Um, I push and make sure that we do the best paint jobs we can, uh, get the stance right, get the whole car as a whole looking right and just the way it should. Um, attention to detail. I mean, there's always details that we're shooting after and trying to get right and... Uh, it's it, no unfinished stuff. We only have one style of quality. So. That's a good answer. Damn one right. style of quality. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's the uh, that's the whole reason we're here is because whenever we started doing research on him and Nichols, um, you know, your outlook on on how a build should should happen and the way that you know, I feel like you work with clients and stuff like that, just from. You know, coming down here and meeting you and walking through the shop and everything. I mean, you got you're we're here for a reason, and we want to bring stories like this to the head of this podcast. And and this is why we're here because you're doing it right. Is how we feel about it. And you know, the stuff that you're going to bring to this episode is going to be exactly where we're shooting at, and and the behind the scenes and everything that you're going to be able to give here is going to be amazing. So, um, that being said, um, there's a saying on your website which is awesome by the way i never heard this saying before but it's it's amazing henry ford said quality meets doing it right when no one is looking and the question is what does that mean to you but i'm pretty sure you just answered that yeah no absolutely i mean it doesn't matter if there's a camera or somebody's going to see it 20 years down the road or it just has to be done right either way so yeah and doing it right when nobody's looking is, is the key to this whole entire industry. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of people that don't follow that, which is gives the bad name to the people that care and give a shit, you know? Yeah, I feel like 
there needs to be some sort of like it's like you go to get your driver's license i feel like the custom car world you should have to pass something at least a fucking welding class would be nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's how i feel about yeah, it yeah we've seen some sketchy stuff and i i don't even know how it rolled through the door but yeah, yeah. I, I think the people who actually pass that are the people who are showing their work in bare steel and and you know showing their welds and showing their you know everything that is behind the scenes because if, if you just show up at a car show and you have it, it's it's just you're looking at the outside of it that's it as you, you don't know yeah you don't know what's under it and it could be an inch thick of body filler but um like being able to take pictures and take a car somewhere in bare metal like you said which is becoming way more popular and i like looking at cars in bare metal anyway because you see the raw what it is um it gives it soul instead of just putting lipstick on a pig sometimes you know mm -hmm. yep. it's a good way to put it right there <laughs> yeah so uh, since we uh, gave you just a touch on this, um, let's bring in Megan here. Um, do you, I'm assuming you feel the same way. How long have you been with Nichols? Um, we've been together for, I don't know, 10 years. It's been quite a while. Yes. Yes. That's how long we've been together. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you guys meet? Just being around town. I, I think I ended up dropping off a cell phone to one of his workers and never left mm -hmm. yeah and i'm like hey you want to do stuff <laughs> <laughs> so she came back and we were doing the build off car that 46 uh ford uh so she was there helping and into the night and really made shit happen and i'm like wow this is kind of cool you know so yeah just taught her what i could and here we are so when you started um working here i guess did you already have a feel for building cars or no, none. None? Nope. Never been in the industry at all. So how was working with Justin? I know we were going to get into this, but I feel like getting into it right now. How was working with him originally? Was he like, you know, teaching you or showing you or yelling at you? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's always been a, a pretty good teacher. I feel like he's probably more hard on me than he is on most of the guys downstairs. But, um, but no, he's always been really good with showing me he doesn't always like to answer my questions but he'll he'll do it anyway i need to limit you per questions per minute yeah well <laughs> <laughs> then that might help some things some things i need explained a little bit more than somebody who already knows the car world so it needs to be dumbed down quite a bit <laughs> now mitch over here where does mitch come into this uh equation <clears throat> um well we started we've been going up going up to silver lake uh at the sand dunes up in michigan for i don't know we've been going for five years now probably and started out friend of a friend um and just kicked off from there How about um, the first night with the the t-shirts and the margaritas you know, oh like, yeah it was, was this guy it was kind of funny because uh you have to have parking lot vouchers to park your stuff for the dunes and it was a holiday weekend and I didn't really know too many people up there. We didn't. So our other buddy, uh, I was like, hey, we got extra parking lot vouchers, you know. Um, so he's, hey, I don't think Justin got any. So I was like, I don't know who Justin is. So we went up there and <clears throat> went down, knocked on the door. And he's like, hey, how's it going? I said, hey, we got extra parking lot vouchers. Uh, Ryan said you guys needed some. He goes, oh, yeah, cool. He goes, we'll be down with T-shirts and margaritas in a little bit. And I was like, that was different. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. So then, like I said, we just kind of, he come down there, sure shit, with margaritas and t-shirts and hit it off. And yeah, just ever since then, we've been good friends. I mean, we don't have, um, I mean, we hang out about every weekend there up there. We travel, like we come down here uh, to hang out. And it's just, we constantly, there's a small group of us that constantly get together and yeah. just kind of works out. Yeah, we it's do. Great. Like, uh, Friendsgiving and uh christmas and we get together and we meet up wherever and would let the kids play and um it's a i don't know there's friends and then there's family friends and that's what they are up there and well here too i guess absolutely <laughs> but but no it's a silver lake that's a special place on its own but when you can mix it with people and horsepower and sand and water and just everything that's cool is there it's the perfect match that's why we drive four and a half hours every weekend almost so yeah 
almost every weekend. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 T-shirts and margaritas could make a lot of friends. Hey, it's yeah, that's a remarkable thing. Yeah, really add is. a taco or two in that. Yeah, Shit. that'd be sweet. And then you're really onto something. Fuck yeah, you're talking about marriage after that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so now that uh, now that we got everybody introduced, before I mean, I fucking forgot this last time. I got I, I I to remember earlier, this, this time. Right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers Here's to everybody here at yep, Nickel cheers. Paint and Fab, and yep. everybody out there in podcast land. Here's to you guys as well. So, where are we at here? Where, where, where do we leave off here? Oh, do we, we're just gonna move on to the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning. Okay, in the beginning. Um, uh, seven years old, right? Uh, building a thirty-two. What kind of a thirty-two? Yeah, that was a couple of days ago. <laughs> a couple, a couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it was a, a pickup, uh, like a street ride pickup. Uh, my dad bought a couple little grain trucks and started cutting them up um had a bed made for it it's kind of a cool full thundered truck with the 406 chevy in it so had a bunch of horsepower and um started building it and that's where it all started uh, we went to shows and like uh like local shows just local or yeah well before it was done done um like in primer we would take okay. it and i remember going to one specifically where we rolled in on milk crates because we didn't have interior in it but no it's 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 stuff like that that you know sparks interest and memories and and i try to do that with my son but um it's my dad's fault is why we're doing this now so yeah i was gonna say like it, it, what did that spark the, the actual interest in and in, you know what you do now it did because it showed me that he had um work ethic and like he cared uh so he'd work all day he was a uh, uh, draftsman so before cad came along he would draw everything out like dimensional and um the measurements and like blueprints on paper he would do them by hand um and then he would come home on the nights and weekends and he would do uh pinstriping and lettering and race cars semis stuff like that so he could have extra money uh to do the the hot rod stuff and go on vacations and give me everything he could so it talent and work ethic came from him so right and um you're talking about like blueprints and, and stuff like that that's pretty like in depth for for that for that time i guess huh yeah yeah and and that always intrigued me too because it's like he's literally building this in his head and uh drawing it out just like they do with cad nowadays but yeah it's a lot faster and quicker but he did it by hand and he had that's awesome yeah dra a drafting table at home and everything and it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, that that you don't you know I guess you don't hear about that too much. I had to take a drafting class in high school. Yeah, and it was fucking nuts. Yeah, just no. just I had to pay attention. You know, <laughs> <laughs> was a big fan. My dad was a draftsman. Also, he did nice. the same thing. Had the blueprints. Had had the big desk and every same. And the tubes and the rolls. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, he showed he showed yeah, he me worked, those. He worked for Ween at the time, so okay. that's what he was. Yeah, because wow. he got the because he's this guy saves everything. So he actually had him and showed me him, and like I'm assuming it's probably the same thing, like three foot, yeah. three foot wide pictures and drawings of just you know anything nowadays. It's all on a computer, and mm -hmm. he's literally drew every single piece of that. Yep, every single depth of it, the whole nine yards. Yep, which is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, he used to do stuff for Caterpillar and uh, Rimline toolboxes. He would design the toolboxes and all the rolling roller systems and like like all that it so uh, pretty cool yeah so is that the kind of like uh like uh image um you want to kind of portray to your own son like or like do you yeah. want to do you want to kind of go through what you went with your dad with your son uh yes absolutely yeah. um but obviously things are different uh totally different scenario um i don't want to just hand him over something right you know he's he's got to want it and want to do it and learn and do the hard work as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, from 7 to 10, I was painting trailers and lawnmowers in Dad's garage, and I messed a lot of shit up, and he fixed a lot of shit for <laughs> me. But but that's that's another thing. You got to know how to fix your fuck-ups, and that may, that's what makes you good. Yeah. So, so that was going to be the next question up was, uh, were you the – a flashlight holder <laughs> it sounds like he was like here fucking start painting buddy yeah exactly no i he i didn't hold the flashlight i never got yelled at for messing that up but yeah no i was 
uh, sanding. I was doing everything, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, my first car I painted was in uh, it was in eighth grade. It was a uh, RS10 actually, and uh, put tribal flames on it, and it was a cream and mint color. It was just cool. Hell yeah. yeah! Well, fuck eighth grade. I you know, I wasn't doing any of that stuff. <laughs> Well, that's, 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 that's the thing too. It's like, I sacrificed all my going out times and partying. And I mean, I, I did every now and then, Mm -hmm. but you know, I'd work the whole day and night away. And just cause I knew that this is what I wanted someday, whether it would happen or not, I'm still going to try my hardest. And, uh, so gave up all that stuff and just did what I had to do and made a name for myself and did the best I could. And I wouldn't even almost call that a sacrifice. It's like just following your dreams. Yeah. That's like the way it should have been. Right. Instead of smoking weed and <laughs> doing the shit I was doing, you know, stealing my parents' car at 14. You I, know, I he's fucking painting cars. I'm well, stealing I did that cars. Too. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. No, it's, uh, I don't know. Sacrifice is a hard word, I guess, when you look at that. But I, I missed out on a lot, you know. But he also gained a lot, it sounds like, with yeah. you being there by your dad. Yeah. No, I wouldn't like. change any of that for the world. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, I don't know. Now I'm old and I can barely get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> no more party days. So I don't um, know about that. He's like over shaking his head. Within reason. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Sitting around a fire is a little easier in the days. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Having to find his closest cornfield. Listen, Mr. <laughs> Navy. <laughs> <laughs> what happened last year when you tried to wheelie your Navy? Uh, may or may not tore my ACL. Yep. Oh, oh shit. Oh, damn. Jeez. It was in front of the camper by the fire, though. It was. Not far from the fire. At well, at least he didn't have to go very far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We do some dumb stuff up there, so I, I can't complain. It's fun. So we're talking about, you know, you in high school and stuff. How was, how was high school? Um, were you grades and everything all right in high school? Or were you pretty much? I, I hated it. Yeah. I hate school. What about, did you take like a Votech, a vocational school or whatever for automotive or anything of the sort? Or No, no. I did all the shop classes and the art classes. I did really well in them. I, uh, I got uh, expelled my senior year and didn't even know it. You know, <laughs> I was gone for I don't know how long. And I came back there like, what the hell are you doing here? I'm like. Well, I'm at school. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and and they're like, well, you've been expelled. I'm like, huh, news to me. So I went home and then uh, I told dad, I'm like, well, so I guess I got expelled. I don't know. And then because I didn't go, I missed or I missed too many days. Yeah. So I went back. I still graduated and got my diploma and all that. And uh, but I was always in study hall with the magazines and, uh, you know, Street Rider and all the the cool magazines when they were around mini trucks and lowrider stuff for the paint and uh i put it in my textbook and do that instead of <laughs> listening about math equations yep <laughs> yeah now i wish i would have yeah. listened in math a little more yeah I was gonna say, right yeah. yeah the one class i wish i would have paid attention yeah no well, they changed everything anyway so yeah yeah listening now isn't a big deal <laughs> So how um how is it um, bringing your son? Because whenever we came up here, um, I did I pass his room? Is that does he have a room here? Yeah, so I gave him shop? an office. Yeah, hell yeah, yep. It's uh he's got a desk in there and he he'll draw and I told him I tell him every now and then you know design something and see what you come up with and what color should we paint it and that and he he does it um, but he's he's into the virtual reality thing right yeah. now so I don't know I'm kind of torn. It's like I want him to be a kid and but how old is he 11 he just turned 11 but i also want him to have a future and realize what it takes and i don't know it's it's a tough thing to manage i don't try to realize that you don't have to sit at a desk all day right or you know use your pick hands your poison i guess yeah. yeah if you can work with your hands you got a job i mean it's anymore that's hard to find that's what it seems like um I mean, we were going to get into this before, but or later on, how is it um, hiring nowadays? I've, I've heard, I can't tell you how many times I've seen on my Facebook feeds and shit from shops that I follow. It's like, I need somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I need somebody to just come that's willing to work. You don't even need to know what the fuck you're doing. Just show up. 
yeah is what i'm looking for exactly um and we've been trying to hire people for years and uh they either say they can do stuff and not even close um or they just don't show up Mm -hmm. you know but it's hard it's so hard to find people that are uh that can build a car yeah it's i know we're in a shitty area but it's it's so cheap to live here and you the way build, I look, build fucking hot rods. Yeah, here. yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. This facility. You got I mean, air conditioning. Un- you got heat. You got, I mean, every tool. I mean, and you don't have to like scoot around like a bunch of boxes just to get around a car. Right. So, <laughs> is that a shot at me, Randy? No, 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 no. <laughs> Are you sure, Randy? He might be hiring Randy. Who might be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you can fabricate. <laughs> I don't want to leave Elliot all by himself. It's all right. I got the cats and my wife, man. Yeah, true. Then hot rods. What the fuck more do I really need? <laughs> I mean, for real. Jesus. I mean, it sounds like I need fucking sand dunes and a fireplace is what it sounds like. It'd be something to look into. Other than that. Sure. Other than that. <laughs> margaritas and t-shirts. Yeah. Margaritas and t-shirts. It's all it takes. I mean, we're all in the same, like, same kind of boat. Like, I mean, we live in the middle of nowhere and, you know, we just enjoy <laughs> good company and good like-minded people. We, you know, go on our bikes and go cruise around for, for the weekend and go to, you know, find new places. So it seems like it's kind of like how it is around here just from driving through in the first 20 minutes we were here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We we're always riding bikes and we're always doing stuff and you get a lot with, you can get away with a lot around here, you know, the side by sides on the roads and <laughs> in the fields and whatever. But mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fun. You just make the best out of it. Yeah. Now, Megan, what about you? You were saying you did not have any schooling when you first got here. How were your grades in high school? <laughs> I was great in school, graduated early, uh, attempted to go to college for healthcare, uh, found out how expensive it was. So just went straight to work. I mean, I've been working since I was 14, so just continued, ended up in a management position at one of the healthcare facilities around here, was there for, I don't know, nine years. And then finally pretty much gave that up and came to the shop full time. So. Yeah. Now, when you first got here, I mean, were you like, I'm going to smooth this guy over and start massaging the metal around here or what? <laughs> no, I was, I was actually just trying to help in the, the front office, trying to get them organized. And, um, I mean, I've always wanted to know how to weld and things like that. And he was willing to show me. So I started doing that. And then we, we started watching uh jamie jordan doing the the artwork on the bead roller and decided that i wanted to try that and there was quite a few times i'm like yeah this isn't for me and he kept pushing me to keep going and i did and now i'm able to do all the artwork and teaching one of our guys downstairs to do the floor pans and metal inside the car so how how long have you been working that like with metal now uh, how, you said 10, about 10 years. Uh, well, I've been, I've been with Justin for about 10 years, probably only the metal, I don't know, oh, five, six, six, five yeah. six years. Yeah. Okay. So do you, do, do you really enjoy it now? Yeah. 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 That's I mean, it's, problem. we don't get to do it anymore. Yeah. Oh, I, we're with, stuck in the office. with the shop growing, right. I've had to take over. I mean, I do all of the invoicing, all of the accounting, um, trying to keep the schedule going, payroll, all of it. So, is that because you just can't find anybody or you just don't like find anyone? It's hard to trust people. Yeah, that's what I was getting yeah. at. It's hard to trust people. I'd yeah, when it, when it comes to unique, money. Yeah, this is kind of a unique, um, it's not like a restaurant or something where you got to purchase this, do this. Like you got to actually know, if you haven't built a car, you're just fucking winging it. Right. You know, especially just when we had parts guys at shops that I've worked at in the past, you know, it's like, we need this. And it, it turned out, you were doing all the research and finding the fucking part and then just giving him the paperwork and saying, here's the part, just click purchase. Right. So it kind of didn't make any sense to yeah. even have them. Yeah. So I can only imagine what it's like to try to, to do it. Well, and, and the guys try their best on filling out work logs to let me know what they've done on the vehicles. But I mean, you can't charge a customer for, every minute put into the car. If it takes that, if it takes a person longer to do something than it should, it's not really the customer's fault. So I have to try to decipher all of that. And you can't just throw somebody into that. Yeah. 
So you got to know how it kind of works. There's a, it's a whole system. We're still trying to figure it out too. It's, uh, it's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. And that's something that I wanted to touch in on in this episode, because, you know, um, I'm just doing it for Randy and I on shit that we work on. And you guys are at such a big level. I mean, not only that, the bills to the building, I could only imagine, because this is an amazing facility. And with an amazing facility comes fucking electric <laughs> mm-hmm. and, yep. you know, heating, AC, the whole nine yards. So, and that's not to mention payroll and all that shit. So, yeah. And then all the <clears throat> machinery running and you know, it just sucks down the power and, mm-hmm. It, it gets expensive and that's it's it's always got to keep your eyes on what's moving and what's making money and you know because three guys not making money for half the day is pretty catastrophic for you know the payroll side of it so i don't know still trying to get used to it now you're talking about trying to figure out exactly like when you you're talking about paying somebody charging a customer for amount of of labor or whatever are you guys trying to develop some sort of like, I'd hate to say the word flat rate system where you're like, it's a floor pan that should be right here. We've thought about that too. And that's next to impossible because you don't know once you cut that out, what's underneath of that, you might have to replace it next and keep going like that Camaro down there that we thought, okay, let's just uh, blast the outside, call it good. There was two quarter panels on one side and oh there was so many holes in the floor we had to replace all the floor the rockers the firewall so we just built the whole car mm-hmm. so and we thought it was solid so there's no way to you know pay per time you know that it's supposed to take because it never works out mm-hmm. i mean like mechanical stuff like pro chargers that we do a lot of those and that stuff you can kind of know how much it's going to cost and how long it should take but um anything else like even building turbo kits or you don't know that depends on the car yeah yeah where where it's going to go where it's going to land with the headers you got to build and it's everything's different yeah so. if you're going to put them in the headlights yeah that was a stupid <laughs> thing. i don't care if you think uh, you know stupid or not it's fucking awesome <laughs> that that was actually my design i had in study hall back in high school i drew it out and uh i'm surprised it was never done uh but we ended up doing it and it was not easy. I'm not saying the, it it was stupid, but it was, that was an undertaking. Yeah. So to keep a factory proportion 32 for the most part, you know, cause you move that grill an inch and it's going to ruin the whole look. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we had to keep the stock grill shell, which there's an intercooler and a radiator in there. So that was all integrated into one and, there's, we could talk about that for days, but now is that a client's car? Uh, yeah. Well, for those that don't uh, don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the thirty two Ford round downstairs, right? Yeah, yeah, thirty two Ford Roadster pickup, it's convertible. A, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's got the Coyote motor in it. Uh, we hid the turbos in the headlights, and um, the headlights still work. Yeah, and it's got turn that's, signals that's on awesome. and everything. Yeah. Nice. And everybody says, "Oh, that'll never work," and it does. <laughs> They don't, they don't know. Yeah. The, the real, the real OGs know, you know, you can make that, you can make it look good and work mm-hmm. and drive down the road all at the same time. Yep. You might fight it for a long time, but yeah. And they always fight until they leave. Oh they yeah. Fight. Now, is that a client's car or that was your car? Yeah. So it's a, it's a really cool customer. He's from Pekin, Illinois. Uh, we're getting ready to start another one for him too. Uh, but yeah, he's, 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 the rare one that just wants nothing but the best for the shop and you know everybody in the shop he'll go to all the shows with us and he'll help uh pay for the trip you know like to pay for the gas and to send the car there and whatever but but yeah no it's uh he's he's a good dude and i'd build anything for him it's always nice to have clients like that yep i got a client right now from uh uh Hawaii. Yeah, Honolulu, Hawaii. Nice. And um, he's going to fly here and land in Fort Wayne, and he's going to pick up his truck and drive it to California and float it to Honolulu. Really? And um, so I told him, I was like, well, if we're doing that, like, we need 1,500 miles of trial and error. Like, I need to just, I tell you what, I need to just fucking drive it here in the morning and then just go home with it and make sure I can make it, you know, yeah. is basically what we need to do um, because he's going to, I don't want him to call 
when we're in the middle of you know he's in the middle of the fucking states yeah. somewhere and i go figure out what the hell's going on with this thing but um that guy he's just I'll like go. yeah <laughs> he's like he just he wants he wants the best that he can get in the truck and at the same time like he's he's all about us just doing it right yeah and that's good that's the people that understand that you have to put miles on it before they get it back the the a lot of people think that you just get something done and they're like, okay, give me. And I'm like, <laughs> it's, yeah. we're, we're not building the car on assembly line at GM. You know, it's all handmade and it needs to be tested and stuff's going to break. There's always gremlins. There's always all the aftermarket parts that we, that we buy. And yeah, you never know if they're actually going to actually going to work. Yeah. And a lot of the LS stuff, all the, we go through three or four sensors of the same sensor just to get it to work and read. Right. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of, a lot of dicking around yeah yeah and even just because just because you put the fucking ls in or the coyote or whatever you got to take it another another building down and then you got to dyno it and all that stuff so i mean that's that's shit that i don't even play with we just take it somewhere yeah so i couldn't even imagine what all goes into that well it's nice having our own dyno here because we can put it on there without putting it on the road um it's a lot safer Mm -hmm. you know if something does come loose or whatever it's it's back there in a building street street tuning uh seven to or five to a thousand horsepower like, i'm gonna get that's a good range it's, it's pretty difficult sometimes yeah yeah i mean you got other people on the road obviously and it's it's not something you really want to just wing yeah so i guess it's nice that you're out here in the open it's kind of you don't run into as much traffic probably right yeah we got some country roads that we can go yeah on. Well, where I was from Pittsburgh, it was just, you can't, you can't do that. It's just not possible. You had to, you had to stay in a traffic just to get a trailer in and out. Wow. But, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, coming back to the beginning of Nichols, um, what, how did, uh, how did this all begin? Um, we were talking earlier, you said it was, this was what you wanted to do, like build hot rods. Was that, I want to build hot rods for myself. Like was Nichols always an idea of what you were planning on doing? Yeah, I always wanted to be, you know, self-made, whatever, or my own brand or uh, style. I did. I tried working for other people, and it just never worked. Um, but starting young and seeing the transformation from looking like shit to wow, that looks pretty decent. Whether it was a tractor or a trailer, it doesn't matter. Um, that's what got me hooked, and uh, seeing doing bigger and better things and seeing customers reactions and seeing how happy and proud they are to have that is a great feeling. So, and, and I, that's, that's what pushes me into the next, to finish the next one. It's the gratification from seeing them happy and, you know, the awards obviously uh, do well, but I don't know. What was your first car? What was the first one that you built? Uh, well, it was my my first car actually when I was uh, fourteen. Um, one of my dad's friends had a eighty four Firebird, ugliest fucking car ever, and cause it had them plastic bumpers on there and then the black things on the front. And I don't know, it, it was fun, but I the motor and trans weren't in it, and it was blown up, and I had to rebuild it. And um, so he made me build my first car, and that was a good thing. And it was a six cylinder, and I was never happy with it. Um, and I'm like, I want to put a V8 in it. And he's like, no, you'll kill yourself. And I'm like, come on. He's like, you're not, you just put all that money in there. You're not going to, no. He's like, I'm like, all right. So I drained the coolant out of it and drove it around town for <laughs> probably a week with no coolant. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to blow this son of a bitch up. So I have to put a new motor in it. I never blew it up, but I told him it did. And I ended up putting a V8 in it. So <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. Hell yeah. Now, as far as the vision goes, I'm assuming, um, you know, being able to work beside your old lady and having her come home is a good thing or, or is it kind of difficult because you never put down the business? That's so far. That's the hardest thing I've done in my life. It's re- it's really hard. <laughs> I mean, you spend all day with her and then you literally ride in the same car with her to the house and then you do the house stuff. And it just, it's hard to separate work from home. So you're always talking about work, whether it's in the car or watching TV on the couch or what we have to do tomorrow. And, and 
I'm trying really hard to separate that to just shut shit off and go home. And it's just, it's hard to do. And then my phone's always going off and I'm always talking to customers at nine or 10 o'clock at night. So it's like work never stops, you mm-hmm. know, but um, I'm not really complaining, but it's just, it's hard to feel like you have a normal life with her when work is life. Yeah. So, and then and Gage obviously makes him in there too. It's not easy. How do you feel about it, Megan? <laughs> it, it's always a struggle. It's always a struggle. I mean, you don't normally when you have boyfriend, girlfriend riding in the car for four hours up to Silver Lake, you guys have plenty to talk about. There's always discussions going on. We spend a hundred percent of our time together. We see everything that the other one sees. So to f- actually find a normal conversation is about impossible. So we've had to learn to be okay with sitting in silence or just listening to music because there's not always a convers. If we don't want to talk about work, there's not always a conversation to have. Yeah. So. What well, sounds? Shut good. up, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Um, I forget what the, that threw me off. I forget what the fuck I was going to ask. I mean, it sounds like you guys are balancing that, you know, fairly decent. I mean, yeah. just, just from the, an outsider's point of view and it gets sketchy some days. But yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's not, it's, it's not easy every single day, obviously, no, no. but it's, it's, it's not all, always sunshine and roses, but as right. long as you guys have the same kind of mentality it, that, you know, it would work that way or it could work that way. Yeah. And, and I think we do That's That's probably another issue is we're probably too much alike, but like, Hey, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Here's that baby. <laughs> <laughs> like our work ethic and like giving a shit about everything is is pretty common ground mm-hmm. for both of us. So we what? try to interject and get them up there a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I was just well, gonna ask. Yeah. yeah, I was just gonna ask. How do you? How do you? As an outsider, being around them all the time, is it? How is it? It's it's great. I mean, they're 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 awesome people. Um, and like I said, we wouldn't hang out with them if they weren't. Mm-hmm. Um. It's every, every time we're up North, you know, they got a car show. So we're like, Hey, you guys coming up? Uh, we got a car show. You know, we try to, or we come to the car shows, you know, when we can and support, you know, what they do and come down here and check it out. And it's just, it's, it's remarkable. Like I've never, <clears throat> you know, I don't, I don't build cars. I work on cars and this and that, but it's to see the stuff that they do is just absolutely phenomenal. It's amazing. It's, it's unreal. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's going back to the <clears throat> belly pans and, you know, flat rate stuff it's it's crazy because like you look at all these out here and it's just nothing's the same it's all one-off stuff so to say yeah it's this price for this or whatever is just it's a completely different animal yeah so we're not stamping out parts and no. putting them on the same vehicle so no it's one off it's 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 remarkable it's crazy to walk around and just see what they got going on when we're down here it's it's yeah yeah i mean we had, like i said i don't i don't ever do it but to come check it out is unreal and then so the car show that we do, they come down and help with that. And yeah, all of them come down and they'll stay up here in the rooms. But we got uh, like Airbnb rooms up here for oh, yeah. our guests. You do that <laughs> every first of the month, is it? Or this? Uh, we we're doing it the first part of June, but we're we're trying to figure that out. We're looking at the dates right now. Oh, okay. I think we're going to move it to fall. Gotcha. How does the how does the community feel about? I mean, I, I was going to get into this, but how's the uh, community feel? Um, because the shop was small before. Um, how did, did you have to jump through hoops to start building hot rods here or did, was the community like, yeah, fuck yeah, bring on some hot rods, you know? Yeah. I mean, I never asked for anybody's permission, but just do what you want. Nobody can stop you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you had to talk to County, go to a court hearing or something. No, no, actually it's really, <laughs> really easy. Awesome. <laughs> yep. Now I started in my garage. Um, uh, in 2007 is, is a business. Um, so I ran a speed shop on main street and then I go home and work on the projects that came in. So do the airbrush and the paint and, uh, build bikes and do all that during the evening and night. So that I worked probably 20 hours for 10 years straight just to make enough money to survive. Yeah. So, and it was never easy. I like, I, uh, uh, it got real hard where I couldn't afford my house. I couldn't afford, afford my car. I lost the car in a house. And um, I just went and started working and making money and got all that stuff back. And you know, I had zero monies. 
just a passion, I guess. Now, as far as that goes, how did you start with clientele in the beginning? And to, to, to how hard is it to find clientele now? Before it was really hard. Um, you know, it, it's, you're a new guy and nobody's really seen what you can do. Uh, so they have to trust you and go off your word and, uh, it just started snowballing from there. And then we got lucky. I don't remember what year it was, but we built an international pickup. It was a two tone green. Uh, and we started going to shows and like, uh, the Columbus good guys and all the NSRA stuff and people see what you can do. And that's how you get those customers. Um, which started to really work. We got our first customer from Barrett Jackson and, uh, Palm beach with a big customer, like here's money's building me something cool. Yeah. And, uh, that's when it all really started coming together until the TV show hit. And, and then the nitrous bottle got filled and we're still trying to figure out how to deal with it. <laughs> Sounds like a good problem to have. Um, we were going to touch base on the whole entire wrench thing. Um, did that come about because you were on shows before? Like the the list that I read off before, you you kind of dabbled on Spike TV and stuff like that. Did did that come about that way, or how did how did how did that come about? Uh, so we actually went, did a build off with a motorcycle. Um, it was a flame throwing bike, so we threw big fire with it and. Uh, we ended up winning the the competition and the bike was on a cover of a magazine and the producer from McGill entertainment in New York, seen it on the shelf at Barnes and Nobles, went and picked it up and called us. And we, we were just caught us in a good mood. And we were, me and Nick were joking around and we did a Skype interview. And next thing we know, there's a film crew here and we're running all over hell doing like a, a teaser episode. And then we started filming <laughs> so and the rest is history yeah, at that yeah. point in time yeah what was that like um like in the uh build process of uh of the actual show i've got the noisiest chair in the goddamn room <laughs> it's okay don't worry about it <laughs> better I'll, you than me i'll edit half of it out as long as we catch all the cracks of the beers that's all that really matters you know yeah, it's, right? a, it's a soda pop yeah um <laughs> uh, what, what so was anyway, would you yeah, ask me Randy? What, what was that like um at the beginning of that whole process like of the of the tv show probably like oh. the the um that first episode or the the, the what, first filming when filming it first part happened it. you're like you kind of feel like you won the lottery because um there's a lot of shops out there there's a lot of good shops yeah there's a lot of people building shit in their two-car garage that is fucking phenomenal and way better than some of the top-notch shops mm -hmm. why don't they have a show what why you know i ask that question all the time yeah and uh you don't get one, Randy. I don't get one. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Yeah, I could have grabbed you one too. I'm a dick. It's all. It's all good. We got a guy for it. We're good. <laughs> Beer assistant. <laughs> Beer assistant. <laughs> but no, it, and it started out like, yeah, let's do this, and then um, we realized how hard it was going to be uh, with. So how'd that conversation go, like? Like with the producers, like, were they like, okay, you're going to build this, these many cars in one season or did it just kind of like, you're like, did you expect one thing and then another thing happened? That's kind of what I'm asking. Uh, I wouldn't really say that. Um, just touch it. <laughs> it says it's dead. Dead. Technological difficulties. Oh, it's all right. Just. We'll just keep on rolling. Yeah, keep keep rolling. <laughs> so we just keep, we're getting we're getting Mitch out of the That's out of the picture. That's fine. Nobody wants to see me anyways. Well, they want to well, see that shirt. I can move it over there and I'll just I'll just take it off. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Randy? Pimps died. Yeah. Not Randy, the phone. <laughs> yeah, we're still on. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. About the show. Yeah, yeah, about the show. So I don't remember where I was. Damn it, Randy. Randy, what the hell did you say? I asked him about the um, the uh, the conversation, how that went. Like, oh, the conversation with oh, the... Oh, yeah. So scheduling out the builds yeah. and all of that. So when we agreed to it, we had to tell them what we could, or not what we could do, but what we had available. Um, and turns out they wanted it all, but... 
when you're when you're so excited about getting a TV show and trying to portray the image you want is uh, all that's running through your head. And then I overlooked, wow, that's a lot of cars. So that was uh, five builds with five people in the shop in six or seven months. Which is just nuts. No, it's it's impossible. And One of those cars could take even longer than that many that yeah. many months. No, it's and and you talk to a lot of the people that do have TV shows, and they're like, "Yeah, it's ridiculous." And they're like, "Well, half half this car wasn't even done, and like they just shot the one side." And yeah, um, and we ran into that a couple times, and we just couldn't get shit done in time, and you just have to. It's all. It's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> yeah, which is which is funny because we've talked about this in the past. We actually had a whole episode specifically talking about shows, car shows on TV, and like um, we've never had a fucking TV show. Especially, I mean, you're the first person I've talked to that's had a TV show that's actually the man behind the scene. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. <laughs> and, it was uh, the cat. It was the cat. Yeah, and. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I have a buddy who works out of Dave Kindig's and stuff, and he's telling me behind the scenes type of deal and stuff. And um, you could always tell, like, since we build cars, we could always tell that it just wasn't it did, wasn't wasn't adding up. And then on occasion, we would catch stuff that's supposedly finished, and the people are sitting in the sitting in the car, like, "Oh, this is amazing!" But yet they fucked up and they caught a glimpse of the headliner that wasn't there anymore, <laughs> yep. you know, so it's yeah. wide open. Yep. And um, that was one of the things I really wanted to, for you to talk about was just the smoke and mirrors aspect of the TV reality. You know, it's just not there. Right. Um, I mean, every build that we did was a legit build, uh, but we had to go over and build it again, which cost me, the shop owner, uh, a lot of money mm -hmm. um, because we had to hurry up and get it done for, uh the show or the tv show and then we had to hurry up and get it ready for the um the car show the like a show that we would go to and then we have to pull it back apart and get it customer ready you know dial it in and do all the so it's it was just do, building the car three times and nobody can make money doing that no so, that's ridiculous yeah no. how did the clients feel um were the clients that you had for the sh the car show the cars on the car show um did you have them lined up already and you were like, hey, man, I'm getting a car show. We're going to do your car for the car show. Yeah. Yeah. We have to clear it with them because um, we need them involved, too. You know, and there was a couple of times where they didn't want to. And we had to get a, a fake customer, you know, to pretend that it was his car. Yeah. And that's which in case you guys didn't hear that. He had to get a fake customer <laughs> for the show. So just to put things into perspective, that's that. Holy way. hell! You all right, Randy? <laughs> Squirrel. Well, yeah, clearly. Welcome back. That's Welcome crazy. Back, that's man. crazy. To hear that. <laughs> but yeah, no, and and. Would you ever do it again? Uh it would have to be way different. It would have to be way different. Um, I think if if we could do like maybe two builds and give us a full year, year and a half. Uh, to do that with the people I have now in the shop, it's, it's, it's more feasible to do it, but I wouldn't do it again. Like we did the last time. Now, have you watched all the episodes? Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel about the, the, the portrayal of the producers and shit that for the vehicles? And if, is there anything you would have rather them showed than what they did show or vice versa? Yeah. That always, that always happens. Like it, it's like, they really put that on there. Like I, I drew flames on Nick's arm. Uh, and one of the flame licks was a dick and that, that made it to the show, <laughs> but you can't show it. I gotta go back and rewatch it. I did. I remember that scene, but I, I have to rewatch it. Yeah. Now. No, they're, they're, <laughs> and they'll put that shit on there, but like, they won't show, you know, the good fabrication or yeah. They say it's too boring, but believe it or not, people want to see that shit. And if they don't right. believe that, fucking all they got to do is go to YouTube yeah. and just see these people that are doing it on a not a daily basis or a weekly basis that are like going into detail. I mean, holy shit, there's people on there that are showing basic metal shaping and it's got millions of views, if not hundreds of thousands of views. Yep. And that was the one thing that we were talking about. It's like they 
everybody wants to, to to see this stuff. Like there's a whole niche out there. I wouldn't even call it a niche. It's a fucking movement. Realistically, it's the hot rod world that wants to see how this stuff's done. And for some reason, TV and entertainment purposes, they don't even want to dabble in that. Yeah. And they tried to get us to do stupid shit like Orange County used to and like argue and throw stuff. I'm like, that's not what I'm going to do. No, you would have been perfect with the old lady working with you. I mean, you guys were dating at the time and everything, you know, obviously. So that would have been, you know, she could have threw some stuff at you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But that's not what I wanted. That's not what. And we get complimented all the time on how professional the show was and like they they felt that it wasn't fake and i'm like well it wasn't you know i wasn't gonna do that stuff and and don't get me wrong the editors out in new york we would always be in contact with them and they would check with me for the most part on what to put on there and what we were saying and oh that's good at least they because we'd have to go back and do all the otfs and interviews and all that stuff and that's another thing is when we were doing interviews in that old shop, it's so loud if somebody's grinding or nobody can make noise when we're doing interviews for hours. Yeah. Nobody can move their chair around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I still have to pay them. Yeah. You know? So it's, I don't know. Everybody thinks we got rich and everything off the show and that's far from the truth. So. Yeah. Cause I've, I've seen interviews and stuff with other, other TV um personalities and things and and they said they had issues with some of the some of their workers where they would you know they're like we're on tv every fucking week where's my where's my pay raise and the guy who owned the shop's like when you find a fucking pay raise you know find one for me too because it's we're on tv buddy like that's that's our that's our gig so yeah yeah and that's the biggest thing that we've had an issue with is everybody and like some locals here are like Oh, well, getting too big for your britches and can't help out the little guy or do this and that. And I'm like, do you realize how busy I am? You know, it's, yeah. it's like running a, another town here, you know? Yeah. But haters nah. are going to hate, man. Yeah. And that's fine. I'll do whatever I can to help them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but now, it's, uh, I'm, I mean, I guess. You had touched on it earlier. This is the last question about the whole whole wrench um, and TV. Um, I'm I'm assuming it's gotten a little bit easier. We talked a little earlier before we came up here to do this. You said about every time it replays, you get a bombardment of of calls or or I'm assuming like just purchases alone, like T-shirts and stuff like that, kind of peaks and everything. Yeah, yeah. Merch sales go up. Um, <clears throat> and we got a full RC hobby shop downstairs too, so usually they'll get an RC car and a t-shirt and, uh, and the build requests fly in. Like it's, it's a hundred to 200 build requests a month. Um, but if the TV show airs, it's, it's about a hundred a day when, when that airs. So I'm always sifting through them and that's another, that's probably a job in itself. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. Going through all that stuff. Yep. And, and it's, it's just another part of that's what I do now instead of working every day or using my hands and, Somebody's got to do it, I guess. But so instead of us having to spend money and go to shows and try and get customers, they they literally come to us now. So I mean, the TV show has done great things for us, and it was worth worth the sacrifice. It was worth the the money that it cost me. And see, that I would call that a sacrifice because he, he put a lot of time that into that. That you know, it, it sacrifice some of your. I guess your. I wouldn't say like your your quality of your work or anything like that. But like the, um, you had to deal with that as well and, and make them happy, but still do your job. I, you know, that, that's a tough, you know, tough subject to, to juggle there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's without doing it has given me a different perspective on all of it. And it's, I don't know. I, we, we wouldn't be sitting here right now, obviously if that didn't happen, but, I don't know. That Probably not as soon. I feel like if you do it the way that you're talking about building cars, like the thing about you is, yeah, you had the TV and shit like that. And if, if people want to fucking say, oh, that's how you, you got it. I believe by meeting you and talking to you and, and seeing your work and figuring out how, like what's going on in your head, it would have, you would have gotten there. I maybe totally not agree. As, maybe not as quickly. Yeah. I, sure, I totally yeah, agree. Yeah. 
and that's that's like the international days that we were talking about. That's that's when it started happening, and and I I agree. I think we could have been at a different level than we were. Um, I don't know if it'd be this level. Yeah, you know, in my lifetime, but uh, no, I'm happy for where we're at and what we got, and super grateful. And that's just that's one of those things where you're a kid and you're like, this is what I want, and it'll probably never happen. Um, and here we're sitting in it. So yeah. I mean, you put that in the universe or you talked to God a long time ago about it. So, I mean, think about it, you know, you just keep on taking the steps and, and putting it out there, man. And, and look what's happening. It's, it's, it's fucking unreal. I mean, I'm sitting here interviewing you right now. When you think about it, I'm just some fucking <laughs> schmuck from Pennsylvania who made to Nashville to back up to fucking Indiana. And now I'm, <laughs> in, I'm in Illinois interviewing you and we got some fucking crazy Mitch guy over here hey, at the same me. time. You yeah, know what I mean? Bet. So and Randy and Randy, <laughs> who yeah, happens so. to be single. Oh, oh shit! Here we go. It's that time of the show, everybody, where Randy is still single and ready to mingle. I don't know why they do this. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, uh, nobody's moving found on. You yet. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Uh, <laughs> it's the mustache. Yeah, that's oh. right. Yeah, it could be. I I don't know. I do. <laughs> it's magical. It is. Mm -hmm. Damn right. Thank you. Appreciate nice. it. I like it. Oh, I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, side note, he played. He he shaved everything off for Halloween, but just kept this. Oh yeah. And he put. He was what? Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp. Nice. Yeah, he's Wyatt Earp. And like married women were coming up <laughs> in front of their husbands and was like, "Can I touch that? Is that real?" Yeah. Go ahead. It's like yeah. you're touching his mustache. Look at my fucking beard. Right. What are you talking right. about? Free rides. Right. You were standing there with me. Well, that's probably yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. You're weighing me down, babe. Weigh beard down. I'm joking. I love you. You know that. You're an asshole. That's right. I'm having a drink. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, back to the interview. Um, so I guess finding clients now <clears throat> really doesn't sound like it's that big of a deal, but how do you go about weeding through all that um like you literally take each thing each one and and read it over um how do you go about being like yeah this is bullshit or this is this actually seems like something is there do you have some sort of um i guess questionnaire or yeah so if you go to the website there's a build request uh section and uh the ladies up front will uh print them off put them in my office i go through them and the biggest thing I look at is what they want. And we have a question on what's your budget. Um, Cause unfortunately money makes stuff happen. Yeah. And if it matches up ish, we'll move forward. Uh, if it doesn't, we will tell them why it doesn't. Uh, we just can't get that quality of work done for that amount. You know, if you can change your budget, we can talk, but yeah. unfortunately that's just how it is right now. So, uh, but we ask the right questions and I think that gets me through and it it's working. Um, there's just a lot of them coming in. Now, whenever it comes to um, this size shop um, and the growing pains, what, what do you feel is the biggest challenges that you have as of right now, outside of just not being able to go work? <laughs> yeah, that, that is definitely the biggest thing. It's like, I want to work, you know, I want to use my hands, but, I don't, um, uh, just keeping everybody rolling and working on stuff that pays and getting it done in the time that needs to be done. in. I get it. Shit happens. Um, especially in, when we're doing custom stuff, but, uh, I don't know. That's the biggest thing is just making sure we're making money. You know, it, the, the fun, the fun side of things went out the window a long time ago. I mean, I don't want to say that, but not having so much on your shoulders went out the window a long time ago, you know, before it was like, Oh, you know, I can, I could donate a day to this and that, but now it's like every minute counts. And cause at the end of the day, we got bills, we got payroll and it, it, it's ridiculous on the number that you have to reach every month to survive now. So, and it's doable. We just have to keep rolling and making money. And I, I need more employees and, I never thought in a million years that not having enough employees was going to be my problem. Yeah. You know, that's literally holding us back from being running 
like the shop needs their own. It's bad, but it's a good place to be. To know that you're that successful now, that you need more people. I mean, yeah. every industry is with labor, you know, they suck. Nobody wants to do anything now. So, but it's a good place to be because your business is so successful for lack of finding that right word. You've, you've kicked ass and you've got so much work. You need people. Yeah. Yeah. No, and you're right. Absolutely. Um, it just, it's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, we worked so hard to get to this point and we're still idling, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy to think that it's, it's, um, you know, getting people in the door. I mean, you know, not everybody can do this stuff. Like you were saying, um, that everybody, you know, <clears throat> it's, it's difficult. It's hard to do this shit. It doesn't just, you can't fudge this at all. If the fucking paint work looks like shit, guess what? The fucking paint look, it mm -hmm. looks like shit. And it's, if it goes foundations down foundations garbage and all that. Yeah. yeah. But I think if anybody's willing to at least reach out and even talk about a position, like just, just to be um, proactive and and willing to learn and willing to take criticism, uh, at, at, you know, you can at least find that kind of person. That'd, that'd be that'd be great. It's even hard to find that too, I guess. You no, know, you're like, absolutely right. And then that's a, another issue. It's like, look how many years of experience we have and where we're at and what we're doing. So if you bring somebody in that doesn't know, say they can sand. Yeah, that's it. But yeah you can't cram that much experience into them in a timely manner to where you're going to make money off of that situation. Plus you're giving up another guy that could be making money to train and show him and slow him down. So it's, it's not unless you're gifted. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm, I'd imagine now, have you brought on people that are kind of like, well, I guess Megan is a perfect example. She said she didn't know shit yeah. and you threw her to the wolves basically i'd imagine is that how that kind of pretty much worked with her yeah yeah i seen i seen potential in her the first few times we hung out and you know i was like she she can do anything that she wants yeah like well, it don't matter what it is um you know she she cares about people she uh will do she'll go out of her way to do whatever for anybody and that's awesome yeah no and and her ethic and it's just like I said, we're, we're pretty close to the same mentality as far as learning and wanting. Mm -hmm. so. Now, have you brought in other people in like that, that has been, um, as far as your, your, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Have you had anybody on with you from the beginning, I guess? Uh, so Ziggy is probably the closest one. Um, he, back in roughly 2008, he was helping me in my garage. Uh, but, he had a family and uh younger kids so he had to have a job that was consistent um but ziggy's been here the longest um not consistent but uh when the right before the tv show hit he he's came on full time and he hasn't left so yeah now did he know a whole bunch when he showed up or was he you said he was in a garage with you were you guys just no, figuring it out together or he didn't know everything. Uh, none of us know. I don't know everything, but uh, he he's another go getter, and he's not afraid to learn, do, and fuck something up and have to fix it. You know. Yeah. Um, I painted his bike a long time ago, and now he's the painter here. So, yeah, he just he learns and listens, and it's good. Does he paint full time? Full time, or you still paint? I don't paint anymore because I can't do it with my lungs i'll start coughing and like, oh, okay. dying and stuff you know gotcha <laughs> <laughs> you know just a little stuff yeah i'll still airbrush i'll do lay layout graphics and stuff like that but i don't get to spray paint much anymore so now what was your favorite part about building or what is your favorite part about building uh it's definitely the design um and the metal fabrication mm -hmm. like the shaping and just making the stuff work because you can design and draw something out all day, but it has to work and have a foundation that's solid and be able to build on. So. Now, what um, what do you think the biggest misconception is um, as far as the average guy watching from the outside? 
What's the biggest misconception on on building a car? You think? Uh, I would say what they think it costs. It, that's everybody like going back to the build request. They'll they'll want a full interior, a paint job, and wheels, and they have forty thousand dollars to spend. <laughs> And it, maybe 15 years ago, we could <clears throat> figure something out. Mm-hmm. But uh, just in that 40, uh, we have $60,000 in paint materials just just to paint it. Yeah. Um, you know, interiors nowadays cost anywhere from 50 to 70. Well, there's people paying over $100,000 for interiors. Um, and they're going for the big awards. But it just it costs so damn much. You know, it's not like we're gouging people. We're, we got one of the cheaper shop rates in the country you know mm-hmm. but they they just need to understand how much stuff costs yeah i think is the biggest issue be realistic with the times yeah 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 because i feel like that's how i mean we're just a small shop and the people that call us and stuff like that you know i had a guy come and tell me you know i got a truck and blah 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 and he's he's like money's not an option and he shows up and he's like what do you think it's going to cost and he's like holy shit, if it gets above 40 or 50, I'm, well, there ain't no way. And it's like, well, then I guess, you know. Yeah, we're not for you. Yeah, yeah, it was nice to meet you, but for yeah. fuck's sake, you're, yeah. you're talking about a vehicle that's completely torn down and you want a full restoration of right. $50,000? Yep. I was like, I can fucking, uh-uh. Yeah, well, and you can't cut corners either, you know, because nope. then then that's your name. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you might do it for, a you know, squeeze somebody in, They, you know, if you do a job for somebody and it's... I don't know. You cut corners for because it's your buddy, and then like, oh, so and so did it. Oh, that doesn't look good on you. Yeah. You know? right. So like, you gotta never you can't sac- do that. Never sacrifice your work. Absolutely. Anything. You know, it's duct tape and paint. Quick, quick paint yeah. job. I want a quick paint job. Well, yeah. It's, There's no such thing. That's gonna then that looks bad on you. Yep. You know, and you can't can't sacrifice that. Now, if, okay, let's uh, if you were to get a vehicle in here and it was already touched or whatever, um, how do you go about that? Like when you're talking to a client and he's like, Hey, I got a truck or a car or whatever. That's kind of been worked over. I want you, you know, I want you to finish it. Are you like, I'm going through it to make sure it's done. Yeah. right? No, I won't. I, if it's got primer or anything on it, it's it all that comes off. I don't paint over anybody's work for good reason. Um, Cause if it fails, then they're going to come at you and you didn't even do it, but uh-huh. you can't tell them that. Cause you're the last you're the last thing yeah. that was on it. Yeah. Yep. So, so it definitely gets blasted and or stripped down, whatever the case is, and we'll make sure it's got a good foundation, you know, to start. The, Does that happen often? Like, um, just about daily. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's like the other day, a, a dude rolled in here with a 69 Camaro and it was a complete car and it didn't look horrible. Um, but he's like, I want to get a paint job and wheels. And I'm like, oh, cool. You know, it's a nice car. He's like, well, how much is it going to cost? I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm like, I don't have a crystal ball for one and two, I got to take all this shit off and see what's underneath of it. And he's like, well, I can't leave it unless you give me a price. I'm like, no, I can't. I'm like, I can give you what it could cost and what the worst case scenario is, but I don't know how much it's going to cost. <laughs> yeah. You so know? I guess the estimates are not, you don't even give guesstimates. <laughs> no, no. Cause they always bite you in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't know what you're working with until again, like that Camaro downstairs, it's, we thought it was okay, and we rebuilt the whole body, built mm-hmm. a new Camaro. Now, how does something go when talking to a client and you tell them that I got to go over everything, and then worst case scenario, you're like, "Hey, buddy, I got to like replace everything." How, how? What kind of a conversation does that hold? Are, do you? I've worked for people that are basically there in a situation where like, just come get it. If you don't agree with what we have to do, just come get the damn thing. Like not to be a, a dick, but I'm not going to deal. This is what has to happen. What's best for the vehicle. It's all about the fucking build here, man. Yeah. Yeah. And we won't, we'll tell them what we will do. And if they don't like it, they can come get it or take it or uh, get a new one. All the, all the situations have shaked out here. We've had cars just left here. Uh, you know, we have to get rid of them and, um, we've had to replace them with better ones. They're like, here, we'll just go find one and one that you want to start with. And it's still a gamble, but we've done that before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I didn't, I don't know. It, <laughs> every scenario has happened. Okay. But it's, it's always hard to tell them like, Hey, you know, your, your car's 
kind of garbage. <laughs> you know, it's going to take a lot of money to fix. And they, they're either like, okay, or like, well, I can't afford that. And I'm like, well, we'll, we'll do what we can, but. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to wrap this up here, but I got a couple more questions I want to ask. Um, you don't want to listen to this chair anymore? <laughs> I, I can't hear it. Actually, I, through I, the window. I don't think I can hear it. I, can, I can't hear it at all. No, I, I hear myself fucking kicking cans around and doing all sorts of cats. Yes, yeah, it's the cats. cats. Yeah. It's the cats. No, uh, no, I uh, we didn't want to hold you up too long today. I know you guys got some shit going on or whatever, but um, what's your favorite part about building building hot rods? Uh, that's changed over the years for me, honestly. Uh, right now, it's having the freedom and ability to do what's been in my head for years. Um, I, I love being able to design and bring to the finish of what I think is cool and to have the customers that understand that and support you and are excited to move forward with all that is a good place to be in. And it, it helps a lot, you know, like that roadster, you know, that's, you're not going to get that chance every day. You know, and every build is pretty high end that we do anymore, and it's 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 cool shit. Yeah, yeah. It seems like you're as far as being able to pick and choose is 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 pretty impressive. And in order to build something to get to that point is <laughs> even more impressive to have the clientele coming to you. You know, if you have <laughs> people calling you every day, it's pretty impressive. You know, with us starting out from from the ground up recently, you know. Um, we aspire to to be in the situation like you're doing and things. And, and um, it's another reason, you know, we get to rack your brain and find out shit like that yeah, when man, we not, come here and stuff. It's not every day that people get to build cars they dreamt up as a kid. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, you just don't run into that. No. And that's, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. But it yeah. doesn't seem to be rocket science. It's like, do the fucking job right. Be honest about it. Yep. And do the fucking job right. <laughs> and yeah. be honest about Absolutely. it. Like, literally... So it seems like is the is the is the you know addition problem that I was horrible at in math. And, and I'm <laughs> and I'm out I'm out down there like walking around. You're showing me all these cards and stuff, and I'm looking around. And you know I, I do this for a living, and I haven't. I mean I've I've worked on some decently built cars, and I've been around some you know some good work. And I I'm looking around. And I can see that that you're doing very good work, and I mean everything that you've built around everything is is not just it's not just there it's here for a purpose and yeah. it, you, you know i think you're doing a very good job at it well, at the end that. of the day it's the foundation of the vehicles that you're building you know yep. nobody's showing up because you can fucking bullshit with the best of them sure sure you know it goes back to if it paint job looks like shit paint job looks like shit if the <laughs> truck don't run i mean some of the vehicles like um, just going back to wrench. I mean, if people aren't able to to look you up and find stuff like that, and a real easy way to do it is go to any fucking on demand, you know, that you have, and and look up wrench and just see you hammering the shit out of stuff you yep. build. Yep, and the YouTube stuff too. We got the the new stuff like the roadsters on there, and uh, the pre runner that's downstairs. It's we're we're trying to do all that, but it's so time consuming. And that's pretty wild too. It's different. It's it's not your average hot rod. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hell yeah. But I get a compliment all the time on being honest with them. And like, if, if, if I, I'll tell them it's like, it's going to cost way too much money. Um, like I had, uh, I don't remember what it was, a, a Rio, some weird looking car come in and it was all rusted out. And I'm like, man, this is going to cost you a lot of money. And he's like, well, I thought I could get it up for this. And he's like, well, I appreciate you being honest. And I'm like, you're going to, it'll be a money pit. Yeah. So. And he was like 80, so he's, he probably should just go buy one that's done. He was living on a fixed income. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's <laughs> a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, where do you see the future of, of Nichols Paint and Fab in three years, five years, ten years? I know you mentioned about the possibility of handing it down to generations. Yeah. Yeah. What, what kind of like... Are you looking for, like to leave like behind a legacy, or do you not care about like that? Like, or do you, you know, like, are you just trying to? Is that the only cool thing? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I definitely want to leave a a stamp, you know. Um, and I hope Gage obviously takes over, but I just hope the future of Nichols uh, ends up on one of the islands in the Keys. 
you know? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I don't care if I'm on a boat or a house. Or... It's a long drive from Michigan. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be okay with that. Well, it'll, you'll come down there too. <laughs> it sounds like he just got a fucking flight for you. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, we'll go down there in the winter and then go to Michigan in the summer. Deal. Yeah. Now, one of the final questions I have for you, if someone was inspiring to start in this industry, um, run. run. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hey. hey. <laughs> um, what would you say? Okay. How about we go with um, if somebody was coming, if you were going to hire somebody, let's say somebody walked in here, had no experience. And you were actually going to hire somebody with no experience. What would push them over the edge to, to be like, you know what this guy might have? Like you're talking about Megan. You said you saw she had it and she can do whatever the fuck she puts her mind to. Um, can you elaborate? Hey, I'm not sure I can, but <laughs> it's just a feeling you get, you know, it's, um, I feel like I can, get a good handle on people when I first meet them, you know, within five seconds, if they're going to be your friend. Um, but you have to see how they react to what they're doing and how they're being told to do it. And that, that pretty much will tell you right there. If they take your, if they listen and try their damnedest to do what you say, or they're going to try to do it the way they want to and look at you like a deer in headlights either yes or no so if they listen and try and do it the way we say then i'll keep giving them a shot you know but because at the end of the day there's still that same quality throughout the whole shop there's i know what we have to do and i know what we need and it's my job to make that happen so i guess i didn't even ask this i want to just ask this real quick the the guys that you have working here do you have like specialty guys or you you pretty much put everybody on everything. You got like uh, a paint guy. You got like a, a fab guy. It used to be a free for all, um, but now it's like Russ and Kurt are the performance and the mechanical and assembly side of things. Everybody kind of jumps in at the assembly point. Yeah, you know, um, the Mike Damon and Corey are in the fab area, so they're the kind of welders, fabricators, and then the three in the the body shop um, are body shop and Ziggy's a painter. So. Did all these guys go through any kind of schooling? Nope. No. Um, uh, one of them did go to wild tech. Uh, wild tech. Yeah. Wild tech. That's right. <laughs> wild tech. Rad. Hell yeah. 2012. I almost or 11. There. Someone. Did you? did you? I almost did. Yeah. Right out of high school and ended up not. Uh, I just, I traveled around to different shops and, you know, I worked for rad rides and Mantino for, it wasn't long at all. Um, Jack, Troy's dad gave me a shot. Uh, so it's, it was when we were building that, or they were building the uh, uh, sick fish for Joe Rogan. That's when I was up there. Um, and that's when I got to meet like Bob Thrash and uh, really heavy influential people in the automotive world. That's where they were flocking to is yeah. his shop. So that was a big motivation for me too. you know, seeing those other builders and like Troy's done some amazing shit, you know, Troy and the people that helped him have done amazing shit. Uh, like that sniper that he built. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Mm -mm, no, I haven't. It's the first time like a Viper's ever been cut up and made into a street rod. Well, maybe mm -hmm. I did see it. I just didn't know that's who we're talking about. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And he did that all wheel drive uh, 32 deuce for Summit. Uh, and I mean, he's just done some cool stuff and a pioneer. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Like but I was too young. I didn't know shit. I'm like, this isn't the place for me. Thanks mm -hmm. for the motivation, but I'm out. <laughs> Thanks for the paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't even know how I got paid. <laughs> but no, it was it was cool. You know, and I go by there all the time and get along with Troy real well and good people. He does some machine work for me every now and then. The stuff that we can't handle. Yeah. You know? Now um I guess we're going to wrap this up. Where can people, people find you? If somebody wants to build, obviously you said about coming straight to the website. Um, uh, it sounds like you got a YouTube page going and stuff like that. So I'll leave that up to you to, to tell, tell the oh, listeners where they can find you. We haven't even talked about all the other stuff you guys are doing, like all their RC car stuff and all that. Well, we barely said anything about RC cars, but you guys let the, the, uh, well, they uh, got the fucking, 
dude, they got the Terminator fucking rubber band gun downstairs? Are you shitting me? <laughs> like the T-1008 or whatever the hell it is? So anybody looking for basically anything, just come to your website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, literally just type in Nichols Paint and Fab in any search bar and we're there. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, we're also doing the 3D printing and all that stuff and we actually make custom RC parts and mm -hmm. wheels and... And you guys are going to be down in uh, Pigeon Forge yep. in the near future? Yeah, April something or other. 18th? 18th or 19th, something like that? I can't remember. So yeah, that's when we're going. We're, yeah. we're going. We'll be down in Tennessee that weekend. Yeah. Nice. Um, I love that show. Scotty D brings us down for that Dirty Dozen. And we, Scotty D. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scotty D. Put Shout it. out to Scotty D. <laughs> we're going to put the 40 on the red carpet and hang out. And that's cool. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything else like for the future, uh, near, near future? I just, no, I mean, we're just trying to get stuff done and make I guess, I guess it just kind of, kind of depends on when you, when you get done and what you get done and yeah. 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 Well, I mean, fucking gonna, like share and follow. You'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, <laughs> we post stuff daily. Uh, we try to keep everybody involved and we get a bunch of questions daily on what shows we're going to and well, a bunch of questions, but yeah, keep, uh, keep everybody informed. Cool. So you said the YouTube thing. You're you're you guys are trying to get that going. Yeah. How are you guys doing that? Are you? Uh, do you guys? Um, have you guys hired anybody for any kind of filming like that? Or do you guys just kind of do it yourself? And so the guy that one of the guys that was on the the TV show is local, uh, so he would come in and film and do stuff, and he would do all the editing. But it just it just costs money, and I don't I don't want to throw money at that right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd rather put it towards machinery or employees keeping the fucking lights on yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> yep yeah because we're, we're literally years out on builds full builds mm -hmm. uh, but we take in things here and there but so i'm just trying to concentrate on that okay well i thank you for your time mitch thanks for your time megan yeah, thanks thank you, for your time always <laughs> and uh and hopefully we get to do this again i know we're going to try to do you know another round come back around and stuff Hopefully we didn't take up too much of your time and annoy nope. you too much. I say we just meet him in Michigan for, you know, we'll bring tacos and bring margaritas <laughs> yeah. and T-shirts. Hell right. yeah. No, yeah. Guaranteed good time. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> but, and uh, thanks to Megan, too. Uh, I know she couldn't stay stay uh, and chat with us. But, yeah, uh, stupid work stuff. Yeah, right. you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> but Thanks uh, to our corner friends. That's right. Yeah. Thanks for the beer, man. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the beer, yeah, thanks for the beer. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, um, on Facebook, you can find us. Uh, it's all about the build. We have our we got our own page now. Um, you can follow us along there. Um, before this drops, we said we're sending hints out there of where we're at and location and shit like that. So if you want to see what anything behind the scenes of it's all about the build podcast, you can come to that. Um, IBF Hot Rods. We always got to throw that out there. Um, you wonder what the fuck we're doing. You know, it's not to the magnitude that's going on around here, but we got three builds going on, you know, we got <laughs> shit going on. That's awesome. Happy for you. But yeah. uh, I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm grateful for the time that you gave me and I'm grateful that uh, I was able to bring my wife along and, you know, Randy, Randy. but, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I'm, I'm truly impressed. And, and uh, you know, I think your dad would be absolutely happy with where you're at. Proud. And, so, yeah. and it's totally proud with everything that you're doing. And, um, you know, I know he was a big figure in your life and stuff like that. And, and, uh, he's looking down smiling and, um, I'm just so grateful that, that you gave us the time and, uh, and I appreciate it. No, you guys are welcome anytime. And, uh, um, appreciate it to, to right, Nichols we'll Payton Fab. Here. We'll be over here in the b, &B. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to everybody. Cheers. 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 Till next time. See you guys later. Thanks for listening to this episode of It's All About the Build podcast. Please comment and let us know your thoughts. Subscribe to the channel to follow along. And if you haven't already, check out our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok to keep up with what we have going on every week. Thank you all for listening.